Okay, I will now take the sit-on by roll call. Um, Councillors Alec Allison and John Anderson are both present. Councillor John Bradley. <laughs> Following councillors are also present. Councillors Arch Buchanan, Margaret Cowie, Peter Craig, Maureen Devlin, Mary Donnelly, Isabel Dorman. Is Councillor Fiona Dryborough present? Councillor Lindsay Hamilton's present. I have apologies from Councillor Harrow and Councillor Horsham. Following councillors are also present Councillor Anne LeBlonde, Martin Lennon, Richard Lockhart, Joe Lowe. Councillor Ian McCallan, are you present? Councillors David McLaughlin, Lynn, Lynn Nayland, and Carol Nugent are present. Councillor John Ross. Councillors Graham Scott and David Shearer are present. I have apologies from Councillor Thompson. Uh, is Councillor Convery present? I'm here, Stuart, yeah. And Councillor Jim Wartot is also present. I've also noted the officers who are present and I'll now pass you back to the Chair for today's business. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Do we have any declarations of interest? No hands raised, Chair. Thank you, Stuart. Can we agree the minutes of the previous meeting in pages 3 to 10? Agreed. OK, thank you. Agenda item 3, that's application P201047 in pages 11 to 30. And Bernard will take us for the item. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Chair. Planning permission in principle is sought for the redevelopment of Auckland and Tibber Farm. The site is located between East Kilbride, Blantyre and Hampton and extends to approximately 11 hectares within a wider estate, which is roughly 200 hectares. The application site comprises six agricultural fields located to the north and south of Auckland Tibber Road. The details of the proposal include the redevelopment of existing farm buildings within the site to provide farm workers' dwellings, new agricultural buildings, an estate office and main farmhouse along with access, landscaping and associated infrastructure. The development relates to the reintroduction of farming at this location, amalgamating four previous farms into one single estate. As the application is for planning permission in principle, detailed plans do not form part of the application and instead an indicative layout is being submitted. Access to the site would be taken from Hawk and Tibber Road with a loop road created within the site. Due to the size of the application site, the application is regarded as a major development and was subject to a 12-week period of pre-application consultation. In terms of local plan policy, the key policy affecting the site is the Greenbelt policy, as that covers the whole area. The purpose of the Greenbelt is to direct development to the most appropriate locations and support regeneration, protect and enhance the character, landscape, setting and identity of the settlement, and protect and provide access to open space. Development in the Green Belt will be strictly controlled and any proposals should accord with the appropriate duties set out in Scottish planning policy. Both the Green Belt and rural area function primarily for agriculture, forestry, recreation and other uses appropriate to the countryside. In terms of consultation, the responses are summarised in section four of the report and no objections have been received. Any matters raised can be addressed through the use of suitable planning conditions. Three letters of representation were received and the issues raised are also summarised in section five of the report. The main issues relate to access, drainage and finishing materials. The application for the redevelopment of existing <coughs> farm buildings to provide farm workers dwellings, new agricultural buildings, a state office and main farmhouse with access, landscaping and associated infrastructure is considered to be acceptable as the proposal conforms with local plan policy and raises no significant environmental amenity or infrastructure issues. The application is a fairly unique proposal in that it involves the reintroduction, reintroduction of farming at this Greenbelt location through the amalgamation of four previous farms into one managed agricultural estate. The proposal would involve the sympathetic reuse of existing partly derelict agricultural buildings and in this regard it is considered that the proposed works would have a positive impact on the environment 
and would help to transform a considerable area of underutilised farmland, which has been subject to fly tipping and poor management, into a long-term, sustainable and economically viable use. The supporting documents advise that the applicant is currently running the business remotely, which has many challenges associated with it, and that the approval of the application would assist in progressing works that would secure and strengthen the agricultural enterprise. <coughs> Given the amalgamation of four previous land holdings, which would each have had their own residential premises, it is considered that the provision of the proposed main farmhouse, which takes the form of an estate house, is commensurate with the area of land to which it relates. In terms of the scale and design of the buildings proposed, the new farmhouse would be located in a natural hollow and plateau within the landscape to the northeast of the existing agricultural buildings. An enhanced structure planting along Ockentibber Road would also ensure that there would be no adverse impact on the character or visual amenity of the wider Greenbelt area. Any future detailed or matters specified in conditions applications would be the subject of further careful design assessments to ensure the provision of a high quality development which accords with the various criteria contained within the Council's policy to ensure that the proposal would have no adverse impact on the character or visual amenity of the wider area. Overall, it is considered that the application complies with the relevant local plan policies and is acceptable. It is recommended that the application is granted subject to conditions. To you, Chair. Thank you, Bernard. Joe, could I just ask if you could mute your mic, please? Joe, Councillor Law, could you mute your mic, please? My mic? Yes, please. Unless you're going to be saying something. I'm no, no, I'm not saying anything. Could you mute it, please? Oh, wait a minute. Thank you. Anyone get any questions for Bernard? Thank you, Joe. Councillor Allison? Yeah. No objection in principle to the proposal here. Just a bit of clarification, Bernard. You're saying it's the amalgamation of four farms, which I presume is more than the six fields within this planning application. So I take it to six fields. Why have they identified six fields, basically? The, the six fields have been identified. That's just the area where the development will occur. Um, that's a wider, that's a roughly about 11 hectares but the whole um, farm area covers about 200 hectares. It's just that's the area where they would actually be um, redeveloping the existing farmsteading that's there and putting up their agricultural buildings and any other new buildings associated with it. So it was just to differentiate between the two areas. Mm, seems quite a large area, but fine. OK, I don't see any other hands. I'll move the report. I'll second it, Chair. Thank you. Agree the report? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Item four is application P201391 and pages 31 to 44. And I'll ask Bernard to take us through the item as well. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Chair. Planning and permission is sought for the erection of a residential development containing 38 dwelling houses. The application has been submitted by Cruden Building and Renewals on behalf of South Lanarkshire Council. The majority of the site was formerly occupied by Craigbank Primary School and associated school grounds. Within the site, there are no significant level changes and it's enclosed by Avon Road to the north and a mixture of open space and residential properties on the other sites. The development would comprise a mixture of house types, including terraced houses, semi-detached houses, cottage flats and single number of bedrooms within the properties would range from two to four bedrooms. The properties would be available to rent and operated by South Lanarkshire Council. Externally, the properties would be finished in a variety of materials, primarily comprising facing brick and render. Within the development, a total of 70 off-street parking spaces would be provided. Due to the presence of main workings on part of the site, some ground stabilisation and remediation works will also be undertaken as part of the development. In terms of the local plan, the majority of the site is designated as suitable for housing and the principle of a residential development in this location is considered to be an, an appropriate form of development. No objections have been raised from consultees subject to the use of appropriate conditions and these comments are summarised in section four of the report. 
there were no objections received to the proposal public. In general land use terms and policy terms, the principle of a residential development at this location is acceptable. The proposed development would make use of a brownfield site and contribute to the regeneration of the surrounding area. The design, layout and scale of the development are considered to be acceptable, along with the impact on the surrounding area. <coughs> a residential development at this location would not alter unacceptably the character and amenity of the area. The proposal represents an appropriate form of development at this location and is considered to be acceptable. A development of social housing on behalf of the Council will be of benefit to the local area and is to be welcomed. Overall, it is considered the application complies with the relevant local plan policies and it is recommended that the application is granted subject to conditions. Thank you, Bernard. Any questions or comments for Bernard? Peter? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, absolutely welcome uh, uh, these additional uh, social rented houses. Uh, my question is around about uh, the amenity uh, in that area. Uh, the site, uh, the boundary of the site, uh, boundaries on uh, Morgan Glen uh, and uh, the walkway that takes people into Morgan Glen. So, uh, is there uh, any plans to stabilise? I know you've, you've, you've talked about stabilisation. Is there any plans to stabilise that because that path uh, has been prone to landslip before? Sorry, um, Councillor Craig there. I just, you were breaking up just at the end there and I didn't quite quite catch that. Could you just say that? Yeah, uh, the, the path that runs on the boundary uh, to Morgan Glen uh, is an important amenity for the area uh, and it's been subject to landslip before. You talk in the... the in the report about stabilisation. Will any stabilisation take place on that path? The, in the south, I think it's the southeast corner of the site, is where there have been some mine workings um, historically. As part of this proposal, um, because of the triple SI along the Avondale Water and the woodland area there, there is a 15 metre offset from any of the development and the woodland area. Within some of that area where it's required, there will be ground stabilisation works undertaken, and that's a combination of just preventing any further landslips, as you mentioned, um, but also ensuring the integrity of the proposals and making sure that they are not adversely affected. The footpath links, they will also be retained. OK, thanks very much. OK, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Don't see any hands, so I'll move the report. I'll second it, Chair. Thank you. Agree the report? Agreed. Agreed. OK, thank you all very much. I don't have any items of urgent business, so I'd like to thank you all very much for your attendance. I'll ask Stuart to stop the recording. Thank you and take care. Thanks, Chair.